G'day for yours, old. My grandpa got a new TV. This is his old Mitsubishi. I decided to, uh, he was going to take it to the tip, but the bloody ended up wanting too much, charging him too much money to get rid of it, which is bloody stupid, because all I do is just put it in a landfill and that's it. Not recycling it, bastards. But anyway, I decided to, uh, savage all the goodies out of it. Got everything, uh, everything I could, all the circuit board, the filter board, the, uh, Cable management tire, they're quite handy. Even the um, brushed aluminium badge for the front of the set. Modern TVs just have a bit of um, these just laser printed under the plastic. So that's off another the other TV I um, got that big screen out of. So always nice to have, like car badges, stick them on your wall. Kept all the screws, the clips, and the CRT uh, deflection coil clamps. So went in the neck, the CRT. Kept the deflection coil, savage the copper. Got these little boards here off there. So I kept all of it. Lots of stuff I could really use off this. Nice big uh, resistors. Nice big uh, 470 amp resistor there. This is a 400 volt. 150 microfarad Nichicon. I can stick that in the capacitor bank. And then a big resistor there. Nice big um, Panasonic Matsushita flyback. Got a nice rounded uh, context uh, contour to it, like older flybacks do. Nice uh, big ballast resistor, 10 watt, 12 ohms. There's a D1877, a fast diode. That's a horizontal output uh, transistor there. And that's the, uh, I think that's the um, part of the driver circuit that drives a flyback as well. That's the vertical output. Some uh, inputs that I could be really used for an audio amplifier project. This is a neck board. It's a quite a good quality circuit board, this one. Now, the, the era. I, I've got another TV identical to this. I think this would be from at least the mid 90, mid to late 90, uh No, I reckon about early, early to mid 1990s. So, before I used all this, before the um, crappy disposable era we've got now has um, really kicked in. All this sort of stuff's easy to reuse and salvage and recycle. Kept the speakers, that was sitting up, I got a bit of weather damage. 8 ohm, 8 watt Singapore. And there's an amp audio amplifier, LA4270. I think that's a 10 watt. Yeah, that'd be a 10 watt audio amplifier. They're only 5 watt, 5 watt rated. This one's 8 watt, yeah, that'd be 10 watt then. Some nice little uh, capacitors there. There's the uh, little board here, I found it was, it was interesting. It's interesting how these little modules just plug in like that. Easy to uh, service and repair. This board here, I think. Must be part of the, uh, I don't know, it's part of the, um, it's got a little 12 volt regulator in there. If I can look where that goes. Must be part of the um, TV's fanmail or something on there, or part of the, uh, Maybe the coding for the remote or something on that little separate board. It's interesting how they've made them plug in like that. This is the um, the module that receives the infrared uh, infrared um, signal from the remote. You stand by and power LED. And this one is an interesting one. It's got a little photo sensitive sensor and an adjuster for it. You can adjust the um, how sensitive this is. I never heard this TV even had this feature. Didn't even. Um, same in the menu or even in the book. But what it is, it's, uh, it compensates for the ambient light in the room. And it darkens and brightens the picture according to the ambient light. So that's kind of interesting. They're handy to have those little sensors. We've got, here, we've got a Philips TDA8361. Obviously it's got Taiwan written on it, made in Taiwan. Another big electrolytic, that's a 180 volt 220 microfarad. Fast diode. Another fast diode. Here's this, uh, haven't seen this name in a while. Cryosera. They're a telecommunications and phone manufacturer. 36.9M. Must be some sort of um, crystal, I think. It's got 
four legs on it. Yeah, it'd be a crystal or an isolated circuit or something. To do with the uh, to do with this this um receiver here, the uh, modulator, which is also made by Matsushita Panasonic. Unless that no, it's uh yeah. Probably got something to do with the delay line um, circuit because there's no actual glass delay line like the older wooden TVs had. It's all different in these ones. TDO4661. Mitsubishi, I think that's the firmware chip there that has all the um, profiles and everything stored on it. Ferrite core transformer. That's the um, thermistor. It's like a little disc and it's got tabs on it and they bend in restrict current to the, the gears and coil so they change their resistance depending on the um to limit to, to limit current. That's quite a heavy duty switch too. Power switch. Three watt, ten ohm resistor, not a big uh semi resistor there. Lots and lots of goodies, which is what I was went to landfill. Lots of stuff I could uh, reuse on this, especially the flyback. Yeah. Audio, audio amplifier circuit. It's interesting that I put it near the flyback. It's in here. Hmm, that's a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, definitely it's a 10 pin. The um, old stereo, I've got the old Echo stereo. I think I filmed it a couple of times. has the same uh, chip as this, and that was crackling, and the audio was all distorting. So I might wrap this and that and see if that will uh, fix it. At least I've got some spare parts. It's a pretty old uh, amplifier. I think that's obsolete now. I think that was a place for the LA 4280 or something. Alright, I also got uh, the set top box of it with that TV, so I pulled it apart and checked the capacitors. That's a generic Chinese thing. It's all uh, HD and everything, so let's tear it there to see what the inside's like. She said it was working fine, so let's just give it a good check over and might as well test the capacitors with the ESR meter, because uh, set top boxes are. Um, plagued full of cheap dodgy generic capacitors which always tend to fail. Okay the here's the back, it's pretty simple, got even got an optical port, DC 12 volts so you can run this thing in your car. So it requires one amp, so that's not too bad. Let's see we've got a HDMI, RS232, that's for um firmware upgrades. Here's the inside. Not much to these modern boxes, all just disposable crap. All surface mount. It's even got a heatsink on the uh, main digital Northbridge uh, North there. These are your digital processor chips. Little um, uh, toroidal inductor there. Probably to filter any excess DC ripple that comes through. I've blended these capacitors and it's generic. SWC. SWC bare capacitors. Right there's a microfarad 10 volt. Here's the uh, modulator. And an input loop out. I think that's the um No, it doesn't have an RF modulator. That's just a digital receiver there. Not a processing chips with it. There's a front panel, nothing much nothing much there at all. And the date, uh uh try and form a date on this one. No date. I think it's from the uh, late 2006, early 2007, I'm pretty sure. Oh, here we go, here's a date there. MHT 2008. Arthur Best 2009, 2nd, 13th of the 2nd, 2009. Must have the designer of the circuit. There you go. Right, let's uh, pour this board out and just check these capacitors. So it shouldn't be too bad. He said it was this thing was working fine. So I don't think it was a TV was a problem. I kept going black and white as if it was on NTSC. You played with the uh, inputs and it was working fine. It just it came good. No dry joints there though. So don't know. Okay, there was this underneath that board. Got some uh, 
There are MOSFETs there, transistors. Little uh, chip there. Cheap disposable technology. Alright, let's uh, test these capacitors. Let's start with this main uh, one off a of DC rail here. Since that'll probably work the hardest, it's getting the full output of the power supply. Let's give it a bit of a test. It's rated for 35 volt, 100 microfarad. Let's give it a test. Right, set that up there in front of the camera so you can just be able to see it. A bit harder there. Alright, let's test this capacitor. Other than 12 microfarad, 0.28 ohms. That one's good. Alright, this next capacitor. These big ones over here. Point zero eight ohms, ESR is good. Yeah, in circuit test, won't give me the ferrous lead, but the ESR was good, so the meter capacitor is okay. Yep, point zero four ohms, that one's good. 1610 microfarad. And that's the 1000 microfarad 10 volt capacitor. The next big one here we've got 1000 microfarad 10 volt again near the uh, tuner module. Yeah. 1080 microfarad 0.09 ohms. These are mostly pretty good, these capacitors. Alright, the set the box would be a good nick then. Well, it's good to keep these because. Uh, Vintage TV collectors will want these. You can plug these into a VCR and then modulate from there. There's no um, copyright or microvision encoding on these, so they're not going to have any problems with signal. It's good they insulated the north bridge in this one. It's all pretty reasonable quality, too. Yeah, they're probably the firmware and everything will be on there. Zentel, Taiwan. Yeah, it's all generic stuff, but not too bad of quality. Okay, if you want to may as well test these capacitors, see what they're like. Okay, 0.65 ohms, 143.5 microfarads. That one's pretty good. Now let's test this one. This is at 180 volt, 220 microfarad, I think it was. There you go, 0.22 ohms. That one is good. Alright, I better first get poured a bit of a dust over. Now I can uh, savage the goodies off it. Let the fair light's not loose on this one. Bit of a dirty flyback, that'll clean up all right. Okay, viewers have got most of the goodies off this one. Flyback was a nightmare. They did what LG like to do and put these little um, tabs that clip onto the board to hold the component on. So I've snapped off and I've chipped the board off bit by bit and carefully uh, do side of each one. So any damage just done in the flyback. But not too worried about that. Kept the bolt for the heat sink and kept nearly all the good, all the good bits. Capacitors, the, uh, the, the um, what do you call it, the uh, thermistor. The big resistor, high voltage capacitors, film capacitors, resistors, transistors, some more resistors. Got a, a 270 ohm there. Little transformer. I think it's an iron core, it's quite a heavy one. Lots of goodies I can uh, reuse. Alright, viewers, gonna be enough for now, so thanks for watching.